Amen. So we'll have a chance today to hear about uh, not a very well-known saint, uh, Saint Hyacinth, uh, but he was one of the first um, Dominican missionaries in, in Poland. So he was born in the year 1185 to a pious and noble family, and his parents gave him a very good education, both in sanctity and in studies. Uh, he had earned a degree in canon law from the University of Krakow, and while at the same time living a very pious life. And his uncle was the bishop of that uh, city, the Bishop of Krakow. And um, uh, Hyacinth displayed a great zeal in his external affairs, um, uh, practicing law, but he also um, uh, would uh, frequently visit hospitals and care for the sick, volunteer his time, and give away uh, much of his revenue to the poor. Uh, so his uncle uh, noticed this, in, in addition to those exterior um, uh, affairs, uh, Hyacinth also had a great interior life of prayer. He would uh, spend much time in uh, meditation and also frequently assist in the recitation of the divine office. So uh, in the year 1218, uh, when Hyacinth was 33 years old, his uncle the bishop went on a trip to Rome. And he took along with him Hyacinth and three other companions. Uh, well, there in Rome, they met St. Dominic, founder of the Dominicans. And they were, um, uh, they'd heard a few of his sermons and were greatly impressed. And especially by his uh, example, by his sanctity. And I think also it says that they, had, they witnessed uh, several miracles, which would uh, tend to be pretty convincing to people. Uh, so St. Hyacinth and his uncle, uh, they begged St. Dominic to send missionaries, Dominican missionaries, back to Poland. Uh, Dominic said he'd already sent all of his missionaries out, but that he had just founded a church there in Rome. Or not a church, sorry, a uh, school, a house of studies. And that if they were interested, Hyacinth and his companions, uh, they could be some of the first uh, uh, members of this, uh, this house of studies. And so they did. So uh, uh, Hyacinth's uncle went back to Poland, but he stayed back, and for two years uh, they studied uh, to become Dominicans. Uh, they were ordained priests in the Dominican order after that um, time of studies, and they sent back to Poland. However, of, of the four of them, Hyacinth and his three companions, uh, three of them wouldn't make it back to Poland uh, because the other three became abbots of monasteries. Uh, they, they, they were so effective in preaching along the way that Hyacinth was, ended up founding three Dominican abbeys in different countries back to Poland. So uh, quite effective even before they returned. So uh, upon reaching his homeland of Poland, uh, Hyacinth spent his time preaching uh, and establishing monasteries and convents. And he traveled not only all over Poland, but also to Russia, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and Scotland. So quite the missionary. Uh, now, a famous miracle is associated with St. Hyacinth, and this occurred in the city of Kiev. And while he was saying Mass, the city was attacked by Mongols. And despite the danger, uh, Hyacinth continued uh, praying Mass. Uh, but then as soon as he was finished, uh, he didn't bother uh, divesting. He simply opened the tabernacle, took the Blessed Sacrament, and began to flee the church. Um, however, um, Let's see, there was, uh, he had a great devotion to the Blessed Mother, and on his way out of the church, he heard the statue calling to him, um, my son, why are you leaving me behind? So Hyacinth was surprised, but, but supposed he was hearing, uh, you know, a, a vision. So he went up to this heavy statue, this heavy stone statue, and with one arm, he picked it up and easily carried it out of the church. So as they're fleeing uh, the city, they come to a stream which is completely uh, flooded and, and there's no possible way they, they can pass. So uh, the people with Hyacinth stop and, at the stream and realize that there's no going forward. Uh, Hyacinth walks across the water and they all follow him. So that was kind of the, the beginning of his, um, he became, like that became his specialty from that point on was, was miracles associated with water. So uh, he continued his, his evangelizing and, and missionary efforts. And uh, let's see, 
he became the patron saint of drowning. He saved several people from drowning, uh, but also um, one young man he raised back to life after he had drowned, uh, raised him to life. Um, also, once when he was eva- evangelizing a pagan city, um, there was a, an island, a special island with a, with a sacred tree, and all the pagans would go there to this island by boat or some other means, and they would gather on this island. Well, St. Hyacinth, in converting them, uh, uh, he sees them at the island, they see him on the shore, and he simply walks across the water over to their island. So that, that converted pretty much all of them. They cut down their, their sacred tree and converted uh, on the spot. Uh, so, oh, let's see. <laughs> and this, um, this is, this is uh, uh, well, let's see. So he continued in this manner, preaching, healing, working miracles, all the way up to the very end. And uh, as a sign of his divine favor, and as his um, devotion to the Blessed Virgin, he died on the Feast of the Assumption, in the year 1257 at 62 years of age. Um, This is the case of the saints, right? I mean, not everybody can walk on water or raise the dead, but everybody can be obedient to God's, uh, the the circumstances of life. And and if we are obedient to God, that's how miracles end up happening. Uh, Because the saints, right, the saints are always obedient to God, and the saints follow the promptings of God. So when God says, I want you to suffer this, they suffer it. When God says, you know, I want you to give this up, they give it up. When God says, go here, they go there. And, and this isn't like they're not getting direct revelations like the prophets. It's, it's through the circumstances of their life that they can't change by superiors, by, by constraints, and so on. But, but this obedience of the saints to God throughout their life, over and over again, eventually what happens? When God says, he doesn't say, you know, I want you to suffer this or I want you to go here. God says, I want you to walk across the water. And the saints are obedient. They do it. And God says, I want you to raise this dead person back to life. And the saints do it. It's that lifetime of obedience that gives them that power to be, be obedient to God, even when he commands the impossible. And that's how the saints are able to, because they look at the world and they see that the entire world says this is impossible, and the saints say it isn't impossible. Though the whole world says this person is dead, it's over, and the saints say it's not over. God can do anything. And so let us keep that in mind when, when, when especially if we are despairing or looking around and we think it's, it's over, it's done for the U.S., the world, the church, there's no way out of it, and God says precisely, exactly. There's no way out of it. You can't get out of it. Nobody can get out of this, but I can get out of this. And then God works a miracle. Uh, But to to, to do that, for that to happen, he needs the obedience of his faithful children. He needs our trust. He needs our faith. Uh, He needs us to, to, to obey his commands. So don't worry about what happens to us on the outside. Our only goal, our only uh, uh, um, uh, efforts, our desire should be to respond to God on the inside. Yes, I will obey. I'll do this. I'll suffer this. I will hold my temper. I'll work on my vices. I'll grow in my virtues. That's all God wants us to do. We don't have to be huge saints uh, exteriorly. We just need to be hugely generous and courageous interiorly. Uh, That's what we need to keep in mind. So St. Hyacinth, pray for us. God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you and thank you very much.